Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches to come their way. It's Isaiah Crowell's Browns going up against Wes Ravens. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The Raven defense taking the field a few moments ago, and their all-time leading sack man, Terrell Suggs, was firing up the troops. They get set for what should be a good matchup with the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The Browns rookie Zane Gonzalez ready to get us started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. The return man, Chris Moore. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here come the Ravens now, ready to get the football for the first time. The MVP of Super Bowl 47 leading his crew out there from Delaware. It's Joe Flacco. And what a career it's been for Joe Flacco. Began his college career at Pitt before transferring to Delaware. And boys, he carried it over into the NFL. 4,300 yards passing in 2016, a career high. here on first down. Flacco and incomplete to open things up. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And it's second down. And we get a quick peek at the Ravens starting offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense. But if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. And on second and ten now. Flacco fakes the give. Sets to throw. And he's got a man on the crossing route. That's Macklin. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the play. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. So here we go, first and ten now. Terrence West and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And now the starting defense for the Browns. When you look at Cleveland's defense in 2016, it's pretty easy to isolate where their problems began. 31st in the league against the run. They finished 31st overall in total defense as well. So you have to start with them shutting down teams running the football to give themselves a chance to make some plays in the passing game. Second down following the run. On the ground, it's West again. Oh, he's got a little daylight. That good for 22 at a first down. I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner. In fact, they didn't take any skill position players in the draft. So I think a lot's still going to fall on Terrence West. Well, he did have over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, a career high.
First down and 10 now for the offensive group. The first carry for the vet, Danny Woodhill. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that one. Their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Deshaun Kaiser, the former Notre Dame man, will lead his troops out of the field. He's only 12 and 11 in his career at Notre Dame as a starter, and that scares some scouts. But others still see the intriguing mix that, that is Deshaun Kaiser, a guy who can throw the ball, make any throw you're looking for, and of course escape pressure with his legs as well. Play fake here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Terrell Suggs in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. the 20 but only to about the 22 yard line he'll get three but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long and a peek now at the offense for Cleveland 2016 was a very tough year for Cleveland offensively but head coach Hugh Jackson who also handles the play calling has high hopes for 2017 with a revamped offensive line and his creativity in play calling and some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long They'll run for 
for the first time with Johnson. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, as an offense, you know, some drives you have it, some drives you don't. And this one looks like a you don't. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it was third and long. It was screaming for a pass. I think they tried to outguess him there with the running play. They didn't fool him at all. Went in the wrong direction. The eighth-year man from Tennessee. This is Britton Colquitt on to punt. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. Now Campanero. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. West. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll run again here with West. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Flacco here on second down. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Raven first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. This is West. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On second down, Flacco to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver. And it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. 
So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And that'll make it 6-0 here in the first. So that scores now on their first two possessions, but it's 6-0, probably not the kind of scores they were hoping for. No, not at all, but I think that they've shown that they can have some success against this defense. So they'll go back to the sideline knowing the points are going to be there for the taking. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> Tackle can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. When talking about the Ravens' defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? The traditionally a top-10 defense, but if you take a closer look at the numbers of 2016, that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. Roger, Roger. Here we go. On second down, here's Crowell. Dances by him. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Career highs in receptions, carries, and total yards last year for Crowell. His total yardage was 952. That was the highest by a Cleveland Brown running back since 2010. And that sounds impressive, but I think there's much more out there for him. If Cleveland plays even with people, not from behind, he'll get more carries, more touches, and his yardage will go up. Carry now for Crowell. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Johnson on the counter and an alley to run and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here we go. Right they stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out.
So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. ground that brings up second down here again it's Crowell and this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line and they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Oh, to throw, Kaiser. Oh, Kaiser can't get away, and he'll go down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Kessler goes off on fourth down, and on comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal try. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Browns defense getting ready. And three points surrendered on the last drive against them. They bent a little bit, but they didn't break. I like that. And that's not always wrong. We run into a lot of coordinators that talk about, well, if I give up three points, my whole day's ruined. <laughs> Actually, it's not. Just giving up field goals usually gives your team a chance to win if you're playing good defense. <laughs> yeah, especially in the National Football League. They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Second and ten, Flacco once more, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From the gun, Flacco. He hits his target, left side, Watson. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan, or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. 
Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Fight forward to about the 27 yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 6-0 is our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. only up to about the 35. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. But we know one thing, Isaiah Correll can run if given an opportunity. Had the longest run in the NFL in 2016, an 85-yard touchdown sprint week two against Baltimore. This one not quite as long, didn't end in six, but still a great game. down carry here for Johnson and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five this drive is pretty clear almost feels like old school fundamentals doesn't it want to impose their will on the defense was that five straight runs yeah five straight carries to start this drive and like you said the way it's working they may just stick with it They'll try to throw here. Kaiser. The rookie first rounder, David Njoku, with it. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now, 
he's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. Kaiser on first down. Looking for the end zone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Tony Jefferson. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. Some things you just accept as fact in the NFL. And one that is true, the Baltimore Ravens are going to attack you on defense and create turnovers and takeaways. Their secondary had 18 interceptions in 2016. And that was tied for the most in the league. Now here's Danny Woodhead. He and the offense gearing up to take the field. He only has a single solo carry, one Numero uno, second quarter. They need to get in the ball more, don't they? I'm not the greatest statistician in the world. Yeah, you are. But a back like that with only one carry kind of takes me back to college in the classroom. Not enough evidence to declare what you should do the rest of the game. Give him the ball some more and find out. Will they incorporate him? We'll find out. The drive begins with a handoff to West. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. time he's not going anywhere they'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there so they're left with a third down and six well a well executed blitz no doubt great job by the linebacker maybe the quarterback if he could have seen that could have audible there yeah he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense all the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle and he made a great tackle this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at the 18. Call that one an even 60 yards. 6-0. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And we shift our focus to Isaiah Crowell. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space. Maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense? The long handoff. Yeah. Serve as your running play that way. As well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore. Or they get tired or they get out of position or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Kaiser from the gun on third. And it's complete to Britt. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 
Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And Britt was with the Rams last year, of course, hit the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career. Maybe starting to figure things out a little bit now. Has to be a number one receiver in Cleveland who allowed Terrell Pryor to move on to Washington. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a big tackle there as the defender runs right through it, right there around the 35-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Second down throw for Kaiser. A screen complete to Crowell. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. The Browns on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They begin here with a run by West. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons. The ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season. Four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. First and ten here for Flacco. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Jamie Collins coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain there, and it brings forth a third and long. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Third and long for Joe Flacco. He's got his man. That's Wallace. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. scrimmage and he goes down right there officially no gain on the play and it's second down nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive agreed and they really needed that one for confidence just to feel a little bit better but I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run this drive has gone pretty well I could come right back at them now a handoff looking right and he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Ravens on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and seven. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Open man left side is Wallace complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the five yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Flacco from the gun. And his throw is incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Second down, Flacco now. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Brett Perriman there, and it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Flacco, and he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over, and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field goals. Oh, Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go here, Isaiah Crowell in the offense trot back out there. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. What if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, and try and get the ball in the end zone? I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so because the run has been very effective for them. Kaiser now to throw on first down. Sammy Coates has it complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 23 yards on the play. On first and 10, Kaiser. And this will be incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Let's go. One, two, one. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. And that'll make it third down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The Browns on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Here we go. One, nine, ten. Kaiser yet again. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. down Flacco catch made there by Brett Perriman and he's brought down after a good game and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half so we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout
Fresh set of downs here. Flacco. Now he'll let it go deep left side. It's caught inside the 25. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Zone first down for Flacco. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Flacco to throw. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Emmanuel Agba in there to sack him for a loss of six. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. Now Flacco. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And it is good. Oh, that one looked to be in trouble the whole way, but it does get over the bar. And that will bump up the lead again to 12-0. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25.
And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports halftime report. The Ravens are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Browns just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Second and five. Kaiser is going to complete the pass. And he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the 22-yard line. Now to late in the second. Shelton's is going to get the quarterback here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. from here in Orlando. Let's turn it back over to Brandon and Charles in Baltimore. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee and they'll take over at the 25. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Here we go. Right now a play fake here on first down. Throwing deep here for Coleman. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The intended target was Corey Coleman. That'll bring up second down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary, it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. The Browns on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 14. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. He'll air this one toward Coleman. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Thank <laughs> you. 
51 yards on the punt there. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got, the lead. Yeah. We, got the we, got the, we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut him down. Let's see what the offense gets done. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 12 yards is the pick up there. And just like that, it's third down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Ravens on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This time they face a third and two. Now a handoff here to his running back. Oh, and now Wes lost the football. It's out. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Emmanuel Ogba in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. time to the tailback. They'll take this up just shy of the 40. Excellent display of footwork on that run. Now that gets back some of what they needed, but they're still stuck here with a third and 13. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The Ravens on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, Flacco. And that is incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Oh, 
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Ravens defense as they head out to set up shop. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Play action. Kaiser. Caught here left side by Brad. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So here we go, first and 10 now. On the counter, it's Corral. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Second down following the run. Come on, let's go! <laughs> They'll throw here, Kaiser. Looking middle, and that's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Browns on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. They're up against a third and one situation. Come on, let's go! They'll try to run for it with Corral. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. the gun Kaiser throwing over the middle and it's incomplete a little too much oomph too much mustard there on that pass they really turned it loose didn't they really cut loose with that one sharp strong didn't lead to a completion though made it very difficult and on the outside they're playing press coverage left, 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 left. Let's go. now it's Crowell and not much running room down to the 32. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third and down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Here we go. Right on third down, Kaiser. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. On fourth down, off goes Kaiser. On comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal attempt. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hatch. 
And Gonzalez puts this one through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. You got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. To return, here's Michael Campanero. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. Just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. That's caught out left by Perriman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He got 29 yards that time. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So the offense has it first and 10. Flacco off play action. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline, it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. Incomplete on first down, now Flacco on second. That escapes the sack. And Watson has it right side. He won't find a ton of space following the display of power as he's down just inside the 45. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Ravens on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and eight. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And he's gonna get to the 31, enough for the first down. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. play action. Flacco. It's caught on the right side. Williams. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. 23 yards on the play. 
for many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yards can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. offense. That's on the Pro Bowl guard, Marshall Yonda. movement again and they'll march even further backward and that'll set them back five They go pass again with Flacco. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. take to the air again and he comes back with one complete and he'll be out of bounds taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12 five yards that time on the completion and now it's third and goal an extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. And here is motion again, and that's going to be two in a row. That's going to set him back five yards. And the yellow flag hurts this offense, and now they face a tough third down. Once more, it's Flacco. A swing pass caught. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. Yeah. 
So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that's going to bump up their lead now to 15-3. to So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Kaiser on first down. That's in Joku over the middle. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. David and Joku, nearly 17 yards a catch in college. Those are wide receiver numbers. Yeah, went to Miami. Brad Kaya was his quarterback. They were a really good combo. Also, how about the wingspan of the young rookie? 35 and a quarter inch arms. Quarterbacks love that. That catch radius, huge. And what he does after the catch, really impressive. Let's go. One, nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So it'll be first down here after the run. Let's go. One, nine. This is Crowell. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Come on, let's go! What? Nine! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Browns with a deficit they're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. The Browns on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and six. Now Kaiser. He finds Coates complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. They chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Right. 
And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. There's a give to Crowell. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back at the 21 yard line. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. Kaiser hit, and he lost the football. And the Ravens have got it. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts him in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. And now the Browns get ready as they head back out there. And last time out, they gave up the chip shot field goal, but obviously it could have been worse than that. I think they felt pretty good about only giving up three. No doubt about it. Anytime an offense gets into the red zone, the thinking naturally for the defense is, okay, three points. We're going to give up three here, but let's make it no more than that. They met their goal. On the other side, though, the offense, they weren't very happy. No, because there's an opportunity. Once you get to the red zone, you're not thinking about kicking a field goal. You're thinking about how do you get into the end zone, and when you don't, you walk off the field feeling a little bit of failure on that drive. Yeah, who will have the better feeling at the end of this drive? They start on the ground with West. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Second down and four. Play action, Flacco. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And that's complete. It's Watson. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And the return here will go to the 31 yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football. And the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Kaiser now, after the fumble recovery. A screen complete to Crowell. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. 
At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. That's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. First round pick back in 2012. are now on second down. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The Browns on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and eight. Come on, let's go! Here's Kaiser. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Kessler goes off on fourth down, and on comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 46. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this truck. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. Flacco. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Third and long for Joe Flacco. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Watson. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. And look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football.
Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. A chance for us to look at this Baltimore defense again. And the last time, remember, they forced a field goal try, and it was no good, so it was a big win for them. A huge win for them, because anytime you have an empty possession or you force one, you feel great going off the field, and probably a little chatter towards the kicker, like, hey, nice miss, my man. Let's see if that affects him the rest of the game. First and ten, Kaiser. And that's incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Second down throw now for Kaiser. Coleman has it here right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A gain of 32 that time. And now a first down following that long game. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. A little dump off for Crowell. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Here we go. Again, it's Kaiser. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Here we go. One, nine, nine. Third and short yardage, Kaiser. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Now they try the right side here. Yeah, he is leveled. Knocked down hard. 
That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Brandon, it's all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. That is caught, it's Perriman. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. Now that's a big pickup right there, and so often we focus on how the quarterback's faking up play action. How about everyone being in on the deal and picking it up? Second, third levels, you could see them trying to recover. They bit, worked out offensively. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Single receiver, single receiver, single receiver. Hey, Watch now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Now it's Flacco. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And three full yards here for the offense to get on third down. And again, it's Flacco to throw, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, it's hard to put your finger on whether this is something to celebrate or something maybe the offense is embarrassed by, but that's now six field goals he's made in this game alone. Yeah, he's bailed them out quite a bit so far, but it's very comforting to know that you have a kicker that's got your back. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out comes the Ravens' defense now as they get ready for the next possession. And yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? 
is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. Kaiser now to throw on first down. Throwing deep here for Coleman. This is caught inside the 15. Pass interference. Defense. So with a big gainer anyways, he'll go ahead and take that instead of the pass interference call. They didn't need the penalty. It would have been different, right, if they had somehow lost some yardage somewhere, but they did not. Gained all they could, down to the spot of the foul, nothing to be gained by taking the penalty. In the red zone this time. So now it's first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Crowell. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at him with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop him. He's got his target. It's Coleman for a Browns touchdown. Corey Coleman, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Browns get a score closer. And he just did get those feet in there on the side of the end zone. Well done. Probably the exact size foot necessary because I think if he had another half size, that, that catch doesn't count. And he's able to get it in, and it counts for a touchdown. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good. So that will get them back within one score. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns looking to jam the receivers at the line here press coverage look defensively first and ten and Flacco looking to throw and his throw is going to be incomplete well they're slinging it and then there's one you got to put a timer on huh I mean that one came in hot that came in hot but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete here to his running back and it worked his way across the 30 to the 32 second down a little more productive than first seven yards on the gain it gets him to third and three now 
Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. So they're leading. They have possession of the football. And certainly, this is where they just want to milk the clock. And yeah, they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. All right, let's put the check mark on the defensive side of the ledger there. Really nice tackle by the man in the middle. But why was he able to get that done? Because he has four down linemen in front of him. Two tackles, two ends. And what they often try to do is create what we call a funnel. Right to the man in the middle, the middle linebacker, who often leads his team in tackles. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Time for a break. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six yard line. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll look to throw. This one complete to Coleman. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. They hustle to the line offensively. Kaiser urging them to move faster. Brought in by Coates. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. there brings up second down clock running about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game back to throw and this one caught by Coates and he's brought down but not before getting across midfield to the 45 and a nice gain of 21 yards back to throw caught here left side by Britt and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Kenny Brin, 45 yards. And the Browns move back within a couple of the lead. The touchdown is huge, but the focus now is on the two-point play. I don't want to say they have a cushion here, but if they don't get it, they still have a chance for onside kick. Yeah, they would need some big-time help, but you're right. There would be a shot, but the focus right now on that two-point conversion. Here we go. The Browns will go for two. Come on, let's go. They're going to try and run for it. And he's not going to get there. The defense able to come up with a big stop, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did.
So a minute and change to go, and this is going to be an onside kick. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They have the football. They're looking good, but the lead is just two. So any mistake in a field goal can beat you. they got to be careful. And that's where it gets difficult because you don't want that to leak into your thinking. You want to play like, hey, we've got the advantage. We can close this out. Don't play from fear, and they can win this game. See if they can play fear-free and hang on. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he's brought down. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. On the ground, it's West again. And past the 30, down to about the 27. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. down just shy of the 25-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Ravens taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So it's a drive that ends in three, and I know that that line sounds familiar. It's because I've said it seven times now, and that leaves him one short of the NFL record of eight field goals in one game. It has been a lot of settling for three, but I'll tell you what, it's nice to know that you have someone this reliable to turn to.
Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And a good return up past the 30, but was it aided by an illegal block or a hold? Let's see. Illegal block or block. Return team. And they will elect to decline the penalty. Everything turned out the way they wanted it to. No sense in even having to take that one. Hence the decline. Final shot for Kaiser. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.